Welcome to The Countdown, the show that counts down the five coolest things happening in space right now. Coming up, an August meteor shower, antimatter from thunderclouds, and money for space taxis. But first, five. NASA's Curiosity rover touched down on Mars early Monday morning after a ridiculous landing sequence. This wasn't just any landing, though. It was the landing heard around the planet. Earth, that is. The party started at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, the headquarters for the mission. When Curiosity touched down, the room went nuts. Of course, the NASA team wasn't the only ones losing their minds. This was probably the most watched Mars landing in all of history. Nearby 15,000 space nerds at Planetary Society's yearly party waited for Curiosity's impending Martian arrival. NASA even beamed a live feed from the mission headquarters into Times Square. As the celebration dies down, Curiosity's got a lot of work ahead of it, 150 million miles away from Earth. It's just beginning its two-year mission. We've already seen some of the first pictures from the rover, and in the coming weeks and months, Curiosity will explore the area around Gale Crater, a Martian mountain that might have once supported life. Where were you during Curiosity's landing? Let us know in the comments below. I was at home in my underwear. Four. Black hole versus star. Which one win? Black holes, of course. At least we think so. It's difficult to observe a star being swallowed by a black hole because once it passes the event horizon, the point of no return, nothing can escape, not even light. But two satellite observatories might have detected the last bit of radiation from a star before it was spaghettified by a black hole. Both satellites detected X-ray pulses about 200 seconds apart. This oscillating signal could be the last bit of star circling around the black hole before it sucked in, a lot like circling soap bubbles in the bathtub drain. The results appear in a special issue of the journal Science. Three. Did you know the Earth is constantly being bombarded with high energy particles? These particles come from deep space and they have so much energy they emit gamma rays, one of the most powerful forms of electromagnetic radiation. So imagine scientists surprised when they detected gamma rays shooting out of thunderclouds. The phenomenon isn't completely understood, but an article in this month's issue of Scientific American tries to explain what's going on. What we know is that electrons in thunderclouds are accelerated by electric fields. These electrons crash into air molecules, which freeze more electrons, which are then accelerated, and so on. It's sort of like an avalanche, picking up speed until the electrons are moving near the speed of light. And when these fast-moving electrons crash into air molecules, they release a huge amount of energy in the form of gamma rays. One unexpected side effect? It produces antimatter. So the next time you look up at a thundercloud, know that you are actually looking at an antimatter generator. Two. The 4th of July is long gone, but it's not too late for summertime fireworks. Early in the morning on August 12th, the Perseid meteors will invade Earth's atmosphere and light up the sky. Perseid meteors are named after the constellation Perseus, and Perseus, you might remember from the movie Clash of the Titans, was the Greek hero who cut off Medusa's head. Anyway, these meteors get their name because they show up in the same part of the sky as the constellation. Astronomers think the shower is caused by bits of dust from a comet's tail. The Perseids begin every year in July and peak in mid-August. At its climax, you're likely to see a meteor once every minute. The best chance of seeing the Perseid meteor showers is in the Northern Hemisphere, just before dawn. One. Last year, the U.S. Space Shuttle program came to an inglorious end. This led to a lot of hand-wringing over what would become of the U.S. space program. Well, thanks to millions of dollars from NASA, chances are good that a U.S. spacecraft will soon be ferrying astronauts again. NASA has granted three companies $1.1 billion to build private space taxis. The biggest award, around $450 million each, went to Boeing and SpaceX. Those companies are developing space capsules to fly astronauts to the International Space Station. But space capsules are old school technology. Getting back to Earth requires splashing down in the ocean. To push the envelope, NASA is also giving 250 million bucks to the company Sierra Nevada for their Dream Chaser space plane. Unlike the space shuttle, the Dream Chaser would ferry astronauts both to and from low Earth orbit. Whatever the approach, it will require a lot of testing to keep these guys safe. That's it for this episode of The Countdown. For links to all of these stories and more, visit scientificamerican.com forward slash The Countdown. The link's in the description below. And as long as you're still hanging around here, you might as well subscribe to the Space Lab channel or watch another video. For Scientific American, I'm Dave Mosher.